Okay, we'll be visiting Hebrews 11, 1, and we're first going to start with showing the error of political correctness. You will notice these are the major uh, English Bible translations. I can show them to you in other languages too. This is Bible Works 5. I have Bible Works 9, which is the latest version out now, but um, it's harder to use when I'm recording videos, so I'm not using it. I'm using an old version 5, but your version 8 or 9 will be very substantially similar. Okay, notice the error. Well, you don't know it's an error yet, but I'm going to show it to you. This is the basic translation that most everybody says the same thing. It couldn't be more wrong. I mean, whoever whoever is translating this should just be fired. Okay? Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Whoever translated it that way should just flat be fired, as you're going to see by the time I get done. And, you know, see, look, everybody, you got, this is the King James. Of course, this is the New American Standard, and they're just copying the King James. Okay, the same thing with the NIV, which is the minor, being sure of. Oh, bloody hell. Okay, and of course, this is the Vulgate. Okay, which is, you know, they're getting a lot of it from the Vulgate, too. Because the Vulgate is basically saying the same thing. Honestly, Pete, did everybody's brains turn off? Now, faith is the assurance. See, they just change assurance or being sure so that they can claim that they've got a new translation. It's not a new translation. They're not even looking at the Greek. Okay? Now, faith is the substantiating of things hoped for. Oh, please. That's Darby. This is Dewey Reims. The substance of things to be hoped for. When you find out how bad this is, you're going to throw up. ESV, this is one of the latest ones with a whole bunch of scholars with, with initials after their names. And all they come up with is assurance. Oh, for Pete's sake. See, they're being politically correct. They're afraid to vary what's a famous verse. They're afraid to translate it correctly, or the translation committee wouldn't let them. Okay? Faith is the grounds of things. Oh, bloody. Okay, but you know what? This is Geneva. Okay? New American Bible. Faith is the realization. Really? When you see what the real words are, you're going to vomit. Okay? They just all keep going. See? Oh, NJB is even worse. Only faith can guarantee the blessings that we hope for. Did anybody ever look at the Greek text? Or did they just copy the text that they had in translation before? And change a word or two so they could claim it's a new translation. Okay? See, they all say the same thing. So, you know, sort of in, in um, defense of caffeine's misuse of this verse, even though he alleges to be a professional translator in deference to him he's taking a he's taking the common translation he did not look at the greek and quite frankly neither did the translators as you're about to see i hope you did your study on subjective and objective genitive because that's where we're going to be going now okay esteem the is how the sentence begins and the easiest translation for that in modern English would be, it's about. Okay? Here's the word pistis. Okay? It means what is believed. The content of a contract. You will find that in Big Kittle, which is otherwise known as the Theological Dictionary of the New Testament, edited by Gerhard Kittle. You can get it from Logos for about $250 software, or you can buy, I think it's like 11 volumes, I forget how many volumes now, for about 500 bucks on Amazon, okay? First meaning, that which evokes. It's an objective meaning. Passive, it's called, usually by scholars, it's called passive use of the Greek word pestis. 
It's referring to the content. Your trust and faith is a result of the content. Okay? Second meaning. The state of believing on the basis of the reliability of the one or the thing trusted. See, the active meaning of pistis is a state of believing. So the question here that a real scholar should have been asking from the get-go is, okay, well, which meaning of pistis is this? Passive, the first meaning in Bauer Danker, that's the lexicon here. That which evokes, meaning the object. So therefore, is it the passive meaning, the object, the content, or is it the active meaning, the fact of your believing? Which of the two meanings of pistis applies in this verse? That's what a real scholar should have asked. Well, the text tells you which one. See? Pistis, that's nominative singular. Now, the next word is a verbal, verbal participle. And it's el piso. El piso is a famous, famous, famous Greek literature word used by Plato in the Philebus. It is specifically used in Greek philosophy for confident expectation in the future. So it is another word for what? Believing. Believing what? Pistis. See, you've got faith, confidently expected, confident believings. It's in the plural. Now, who does believings? People, not things. There's no things in this verse that's inserted by somebody who wasn't doing his homework or was having a bad hair day. Now, to be fair, scholars are always overworked and underpaid. So the fact that they make a mistake is not, is not a problem. The problem is that they don't fix it. It's like Windows refusing to fix what's wrong with Windows 8. Okay? Pistis, therefore, has to be the objective use because this has to be an objective genitive because believings, literally, confident expectings would be more literal, that has to have an object, right? If you are confidently expecting, the next question somebody would ask is, what? The what is pistis. This is an objective genitive. Plural, not of things, of people. Only people have confident expectations. Things don't have any expectations. Things don't have any thoughts. Things don't have any life. So it's word. See, the content of what you believe are words, right? And the original word for pistis is the content of a contract on deposit in a temple. It's a commercial word. And that is documented in TDNT, a.k.a. Big Kittle, the Theological Dictionary of the New Testament, which I can't show on screen because it's copyrighted. As far as I know, I'm, the copyright doesn't allow me to show it on screen. Whereas with Bible works, it's on screen, so I'm already proving the source. This is the first meaning. What is believed? Because you have to ask what is being confidently expected. This, therefore, is getting an objective genitive. Objective genitive. Now, it's the subject of the verse, so it's in the nominative case but it's the object of the confident expectations. So the best translation for pistis here would be the word of God. That's the contract we are confidently believing in. That's the theme of the book of Hebrews chapter 11, is all the people believing in the word of God. 
and it starts with talking about Abel and then it goes all the way down. So this interpretation is totally consistent with the chapter. So word confidently believed would be a good idiomatic translation of this. Not faith is the assurance of things hoped for. That's pitiful. Just fire whoever came up with this. Fire them. Of course, they're dead now. Just fire them. This is the object of this. This is a participle. Participles take objects. Okay? But because it's the subject of the verse, for more reasons that I'll, that I'll cover in a minute, then the writer is cleverly using the objective genitive, okay, to denote what is believed, which is the first meaning of pistis, the passive, the contract content, that which evokes trust or faith, again, as shown in Bauer Danker, one of the most po popular and respected lexicons among Bible scholars. I'm sorry if I sound irritated, but see, there's no excuse for this kind of mistranslation going on for hundreds of years and everybody just copying the King James. It's criminal. See, look, it's, oh, wait a minute, figures, okay, it's about word confidently believed. That's your first clause, okay? It's about word confidently believed. There are three clauses in this verse. That's the first one. Are you with me on this? It's about estinda pistis el pisomeno. Okay? It's about estinda pistis Word, the object, the contract, word of God, confidently believed, confidently expected in, confidently believed would be better English. See, it's about word confidently believed. Now, pistis el pisomeno is seven syllables in Greek. So if we say it's about word confidently believed that's ten syllables okay if I say instead it's about confidence in word that's eight syllables so it's closer to the seven there's seven here and three here all right if I say it's about word confidently believed it's about word confidently believed. Then I get ten syllables in English to match the ten syllables in this poetry clause in the Greek. And we want to do that because this clause is appositional to this clause is appositional to this clause as a kind of tic-tac-toe. And each one is seven syllables. You have to ally the U here. Alicos who blepomen. All right. Now I'll cover the other clauses in the next um, increment because I'm going to have to focus on what this word means because this is the most mistranslated word in the entire verse. But are you with me on this one part? We're just looking at the first clause. Estinda, it's about. Pistis, the word. Word. And then, el piso meno, confidently believed. You see where I'm getting that from? You see why it's okay to translate it that way? And this would be called the objective genitive case, and it's plural, literally believings, literally confident expectings, and things don't do that. This whole word right here is a travesty. It should just fire whoever came up with that idea. Okay, because things don't have expectations. It's people. 
not things in this is a, 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 a verb that people do not things things confidently believing so we do one more time it's the duh it's about word the content of the contract that which evokes trust and faith confidently believing confidently believe would be better English you see that it's about word confidently believed would be an even smoother translation I prefer saying it's about confidence in word because in Greek when they want to get dramatic and this is dramatic Greek here when they want to get dramatic they shift to verbal nouns and nouns so I'm trying to do that in the English too it's about confidence in word you see why in the next increment, we'll go through our second clause, which is Upostasis Pragmaton.